Good afternoon and welcome to this service in which we praise and glorify the God who has raised himself from the dead, Jesus Christ, and the one who promises also our resurrection, Catherine's resurrection on the last day. And to praise him for the blessings, especially spiritual, that the Lord showered upon Catherine during her life here on this earth. Good afternoon and welcome to all of you. The order of worship is printed for you here in the stapled folder. The other piece of information is Catherine's spiritual obituary. May the Lord bless our worship together. We join now in singing the opening hymn. Song. 
He has become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we thank you for your loving kindness to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful to death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Today's memorial service order was constructed by Catherine and her daughters at a memorial service for Catherine's husband, Ed. And they chose this as the first lesson, Job 19, from the King James Version. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. The word of the Lord. Amen. Listen as Psalm 29 is sung for you. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet. says to the churches to him who overcomes I will give the right to eat from the tree of life 
which is in the paradise of God. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2 beginning at verse 29. We hear the account of Simeon greeting the Lord Jesus in the temple. How the Holy Spirit had promised that he would not die until he had seen the anointed one, the Savior of the world. In his grace, God showed that same Savior to Catherine. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for the singing of the next hymn. Yet, she ran a race. 
When I last visited Catherine, I shared with her words from Paul's second letter to Timothy, a letter which Paul writes very openly, very frankly, shares his heart with his young co-worker Timothy, and one of the things he shares is that he knows his time on earth is not long. He's in prison for a second time. He had been released the first time. He's in prison for the second time, and he knows this time it's not going to end well. In fact, in fact, the, the Lord had revealed to him that he was going to die. And Paul was ready for it. And so Paul shared these words with Timothy. For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my depart has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Like the Apostle Paul, Catherine was in a race, 90 years long, a race. And last week she finished the race, crossed the finish line. And the Lord Jesus was standing there with the crown of righteousness that he had won for her. And I'd like you to focus on that crown of righteousness for a moment. You know, Catherine, a Lutheran, a confessional Lutheran for 90 years of her life. Her spiritual biography states it. Barely a month old and her parents brought her to the font at Emmanuel Lutheran in Spirit Lake, Iowa. And there were did what is the most important thing any parent, Christian parent could do for a child, and that is to bring their infant child to the baptismal font and there have the name of the triune God pronounced with the application of water and the promise that God is here now working faith. Like the rest of us, Catherine came into this world spiritually dead, unbelieving, <clears throat> under sin, we come into this world sin not even neutral towards God, the Bible proclaims. And yet on that day, the exact day, January 14, 1934, Catherine was reborn. And she lived in that faith in the triune God for the next 90 years of her life. Incredible. And she lived her faith, too. You couldn't know Catherine without knowing her faith. In the last year when she was there at the assisted living center, she made sure there were things on her door. She wanted me to help her buy things. I, I couldn't follow through on that, but I'm thankful some of you did. She went, I want that on my door so that someone will ask me what that is and I can get to talk to them about my Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, man. And she would change it frequently. She lived her faith. We, we talked about this a few days ago. She actually really blossomed at the assisted living center. She had lived by herself for a long time. And let's just be honest, she came, became a bit reclusive. Didn't have a whole lot of outside contact. But boy, when she was at that assisted living center, everybody knew who she was and what she wanted. She let them know. I wouldn't say Catherine was opinionated in a bad way, but she had a strong opinion about things. And she wanted things a certain way. And she would tell you. I'll talk about more, more about that later. Because she cared. She cared. She had a Christian faith in her heart with loved her Lord Jesus and, and loved other people because of it. But it wasn't because Catherine was so wonderful that the Lord Jesus stood there last Thursday, about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time, and, and said, here, Catherine, here's the crown of life, the crown of righteousness. No, Catherine knew that that crown of righteousness was something that Jesus had won for her, and Jesus was now giving her by faith in him. A crown of righteousness. A righteousness with Kat, which Catherine had first received on that January day when she was baptized, and a, a righteousness which she lived. Oh, I'm not saying Catherine lived a holy life. None of us do. But she was holy in the eyes of God because she had the justification of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of her sins, and she lived every one of those days from her baptism in that faith, and she let people know it. I knew it, you knew it too. So did a lot of people. And thus, Jesus said, here, Catherine, the crown of righteousness, wow. The goal of every Christian, to receive eternal life. And now God has confirmed her in that bliss. She didn't have an easy life, did she? Ed had a lot of his health problems, and Catherine was right there with him all those years. <coughs> Catherine wasn't all that healthy 
the end here, but who would be at 80 some years, right? And yet she's living in bliss. And she's thankful, eternally thankful for what her Savior has done for her. A Savior that kept her in the faith all those years so that now she can live with her Savior in that bliss and await the resurrection on the last day with all of us. Incredible. She appreciated that. And she showed it again by her life. You know, this is the, the little individual cup that I, we commune with often here, and I would bring that to Catherine. And I could tell that wasn't her cup of tea, but hey, this is what I have, and this is what's easiest. And one day, I don't know why, I don't, I don't think it was on her request, but one day I brought this with me to commune her, and her eyes lit up. This is the chalice we purchased maybe a few years ago. And she had communion with this chalice, and I did it the next month too. And then I don't know why, but for some reason, I just, maybe I just forgot. I'm getting that age. Maybe I just forgot to bring it with me that day. I don't know. Or maybe I thought, you know what? I shouldn't be lugging that thing around. It could get damaged. But I, I came without it. And, and, and Catherine had communion in one of these. And then as I left the, her apartment that day, you know, it wasn't, hey, so long. See you, Pastor. Have a good day. Look forward to seeing you again next No, no. You know, Catherine, out of the corner of her mouth, she said, don't forget the chalice next time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the chalice first time. Okay. And then she bought me this. She realized this was a little bit difficult and probably not the wisest thing. But she would take me out of that. Wow. Now, am I here extolling Catherine for her virtues? Not at all. I'm saying this because this is what this meant to get. Her Savior met with her in word and sacrament, and she cherished that. And through that word and that sacrament, the Lord Jesus kept her in the faith for 90 years. So that last Thursday, come Catherine, and here at the kingdom prepared for you. Here's the crown of righteousness, which I want for you. Incredible. We're going to miss it. Absolutely. But she's with her Savior, Jesus Christ because Christ won it for her. The very faith that he has given to us, the very promise that he's given to you and me, the forgiveness of our sins and the eternal life that is ours by faith in Jesus Christ. She lived her faith. Praise God. Praise God. That's what I want you to go away from here with. Yes, remember Catherine, but praising your Savior, Catherine's Savior, for keeping her in the faith and handing her by faith that gift of righteousness, the crown of righteousness, which is eternal life. You know, in this life, we, we get what we deserve. You even operate on that. Whether it's at work or at school, we get what we deserve. Not in our relationship with Christ. Catherine knew that. She lived it. She believed it. She died in it. Praise God. Praise her Savior, your Savior, Jesus Christ. For all those blessings that God showered upon her and for bringing her home to eternal life to wait the resurrection on the last day and our Lord Jesus will glorify all of us. Catherine has fought the fight. She finished the race. May you run, finish the race, and receive that same crown of life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in speaking responsibly the creed of the Colossian church. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Amen.
we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are always with us, especially when our hearts are heavy with grief. Send us your spirit so that even as we grieve, we are filled with the certainty of eternal life. You have convinced us that your son Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that our loved ones who have fallen asleep in Christ are resting in peace with you. Let nothing shake our confidence in your promise that we will be united with you and with them in glory forever. What great mercy you've shown us, Father in heaven. Through your son's resurrection, our hope is alive and our inheritance in heaven is certain. The bliss and security we will enjoy in your presence are blessings that will never perish, spoil, or fade. Shield us with your power and give us faith to trust in you in every trial until we inherit the glorious riches you are keeping for us in heaven. Gracious God, we see your abiding love in the kindness shown to us by family and friends. As we receive comfort and encouragement from others, we are experiencing your care. Help us bear our burdens patiently. Be the strength of your people now and in difficult days to come. O oh Lord, support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the closing. <coughs>
Joseph's. Thank you for attending. The family invites you to stay for cake and something to drink and fellowship. All stay as long as you'd like and enjoy one another's fellowship. And may God go with you as you continue to praise him for the grace that he showed Catherine all these years of her life. Have a blessed afternoon.